welcome to this online vision session for AQA D1 in which we were looking at the June 2011 question 1 on the topic of matchings. So you can see in this task there are six people labelled A, B, C, D, E and F and they are to be allocated to six tasks numbered 1 to 6. And the matrix below shows the possible allocation or tasks that each person can undertake. So A can do tasks 1 and 3, B can do 1, 2 and 6, C can do 2 and 4 and so on. And in the first part of this question we're asked to represent this information as a, in a bipartite graph which is if you remember is where we set up A through F as one set of 6 on the left hand side and then 1 to 6 the tasks could be then put in the right hand side and then a line is drawn between each pair that is possible so A to 1, A to 3, B to 1, B to 2 and so on and here's one I did earlier and you can see we've got the 6 tasks 1 to 6, the 6 people involved, A through F, and an arrow or a line connecting each of the possible tasks to the people who can do those tasks. Now initially then, in part B, we are then asked to consider an initial matching in which A is given task 3, B is given task 2, C is given 4 and D is given task 5. And we've got to use an appropriate algorithm from this initial matching to find a maximum matching listing the allocation when completed. So the idea of the algorithm is to then start at a point on the right hand side so for example 1 has not been allocated and then to look at the possible matchings from the table or from the bipartite graph that we drew in the first part and so we can see that we could draw in A being connected with 1 so what we have done here is we have added A going to 1 and then we would remove what A is currently connected to which is 3 so we've removed going to 3. So now we're at 3, so again we have to try and find somewhere that 3 could now be connected to. So 3 can now be connected to E. So we can draw in 3 going to E, so we've now added in E3 And you can see that E was previously not in our matching and so that's the point at which we can stop. So we started at a point that was not in the matching, we've now finished at a point which is not in the matching and so we've added in two new ones but removed one and previously we've still got B2, C4 and D5 so we can now draw in B2, C4 and D5. So we've improved our matching but it is not a maximum matching because F and 6 are still not in our matching. So what we can do now is to repeat that process. So again we can start at a point that's not included 
6, well, we can see from our bipartite graph, we can connect 6 to B. So we can add in B6, which would then mean we would have to remove B2. So now we're at 2, and looking back at the graph, we can now attach 2 to, <coughs> excuse me, to D. So we can do 2 going to D. And then we would have to remove D5. Now we're at 5, and now 5 can now go to F. So F now goes to 5, and now we're at the other point that was previously not in the matching, so we can stop at that point in the algorithm. Just going to need to draw that in on here. Now we can draw in the other edges which have not been removed. So A will still go to 1, C will still go to 4, and E will go to 3. And now we can see that all of the people have each been assigned a task numbered from 1 to 6. So we have completed our matching, and so we can say from that that A does task 1, B does task 6, C does task 4, D does task 2, E does 3, and F does 5. Just look back then as to the marking of this. A drawing a bipartite graph with the two sets of six. We'll get a method mark, so we've put in at least ten edges. And if it's all completely correct, we'll get an additional mark. As for the algorithm, for showing an appropriate method is the key issue. So if we do one of these things correctly, we get one mark. And for doing that method correctly, you get an answer mark. And similarly, in the second part, you get a method mark and an answer mark. And then for having a correct matching of all six elements to the six tasks for that statement, and you get one additional mark. Hopefully you found that solution helpful and more assistance with your maths revision. Please go to the Further Maths Support Programme website.